if the rains get back to normal, uh, we could have uh, regular sized trees, but we still lost yields because we have less berries to harvest. Mm. In this season, we have a good volume of berries. That's why sometimes markets during the harvest season says, okay, the, the harvests are good because there's a lot of berries in the fields, but the size of these berries was smaller than used to be. This episode is proudly brought to you by Mapper Forwards Workshop it's time to become a coffee consultant. Learn how to diversify your revenue streams and create freedom from your day job while saying goodbye to that alarm clock forever by becoming a consultant within the coffee industry or directly to consumers who have shifted towards home brewing and home roasting. Protect your income from challenging times in the coffee value chain by taking this course today. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode three of a five-part series with Jonas Fijariso, agronomist from Brazil, uh, who please check the links in the show notes and head to Jonas's Instagram and LinkedIn. Jonas is somebody who very generously keeps us updated as an industry on what's going on. And why that's a big deal is because Jonas is a very busy consultant. (laughs) And the fact that Jonas takes the time to keep all of us informed is actually very generous. So thank you for that, Jonas, on behalf of everyone who learns about what's going on in Brazil from your social media. Now, in this episode, folks, we're going to talk about the seriousness of the situation that we're facing with regards to Brazil's 24, 25 and 26 crop. Now, the reason we're talking about this is because we had Murillo, we had Felipe, and now we've got Jonas here telling us about the seriousness of of the fact that we haven't had water in Brazil, nothing significant anyway, for quite some Mm -hmm. time. And we should be expecting, as as well, there have been massive fires in certain parts of Brazil. A lot of these things, all of these things, let's be real, uh, including the labor shortage, including a lot of these things, are going to have an impact on the crops for the 24, 25, and 26 seasons. What do we know about that so far, Jonas? Mm -hmm. Uh, The season 2023, the season uh, that we harvest uh, last year and the season we harvest this season, always the market or the people, I always said, uh, they say it's fine. It's (laughs) usually what I I read (laughs) when we have a problem, which real problem. Okay. They said it's fine. The Brazil always will uh, support the market. Um, and if people do not trust me, I always say take the data since 2021 and watch it that we never harvest the season biggest as 2021 uh, because each year we have some trouble related right. to climate. So it peaked in then. 2021 is what you're saying. It peaked in yeah, 2021 uh, and then 2020. I think, oh, sorry, it's 20, 2020. Right. Uh, it peaked in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. It peaked in 2020. Yeah. And then every year since then, Brazil has mm-hmm. struggled to meet its quotas. Correct? Yeah. 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 Uh, usually because of climate. Um uh, some climate issue affect the season um, uh, because of the droughts, frost, or temperature uh, in some way or some level in different part of the the coffee season mm-hmm. because the the climate is not about uh, just drought mm-hmm. or heat waves or frost. Is very depending when it happens to understand what the level of a problem the farmer or the market will have to face. And sometimes the market uh, or the customer or the roaster and enough have uh, do not understand uh, if the drought happens here, what's happened could affect two seasons 
or one season or maybe three seasons. Mm -hmm. It's very depending when the problem strikes the coffee. So in 2023, we, in my opinion and the, the numbers that we have, mm -hmm. the market was kind of frustrated about the season because they're expecting a better season. Uh, in, in 2024, too, uh, uh, market are expecting a season uh, bigger than 2023. Uh, but agronomists and farmers in Brazil are seeing that will not happen because of the level of, of uh, temperature, high temperatures that we had during the fruit development. Mm -hmm. uh, that affect the size of the seed of the coffee, uh, which affect the yields. Uh, why? I, I always like to say that because if the seed are smaller than we are expecting, that means the volume of coffee that we have to harvest in order to make a coffee bag will be mm -hmm. bigger. Because if a coffee tree, for instance, has um, uh, 400 berries, Mm -hmm. uh, if the development didn't go well, we still have 400 berries, but the size of each one of them will be smaller. So we need uh, three trees in order to make one bag. Mm -hmm. And if we have a good season, maybe two trees. And we are talking about hectares and trees. And so uh, these affect directly the the yields the total yields of Brazil during the season it's the main reason why we uh, harvest less coffee not so much less than 2024 using the official numbers mm -hmm. uh, uh, but was less than 2023 uh, and and the size of the seeds were smaller than uh, we are expecting for this season, um, uh, or not expecting, but smaller than the average that we had for, for a regular season that shows the climate, the temperature affect very um, much the, the season 2024. If we have drought, mm -hmm. for instance, it will be different because maybe we lost berries during the development, you know, mm -hmm. because of the drought. But if the rains get back to normal, uh, we could have uh, regular sized trees, but we still lost yields because we have less berries to harvest. Mm -hmm. In this season, we have a good volume of berries. That's why sometimes markets during the harvest season says, okay, the the harvests are good because there's a lot of berries in the fields, but the size of these berries was smaller than used to be. Um, so I always heard this thing that co in coffee, one year you'll have a, an up year and the next year it will be a down year. Yeah. Does that still apply? Um. In the last five years, I say no. It has not, of, right? Yeah, because the climate is affecting the normal uh, life cycle of the coffee, mm. you know? If the things happen as usual to be, uh, we have that. Because wh Why that happens, I don't know if this is so much uh, normal in other countries mm -hmm. uh, because the different level of technology in yield. Mm -hmm. that we have in Brazil. So what we do in Brazil, it's use the technology in order to, to have the best yields that the coffee tree could have in one season. But when we do that, the plant uh, use all the energy for that season. Okay. Uh, so the energy, we harvest the beans and the plants are very low in energy levels. So leave, yeah. So they need a year in order to recover all of that. So grow new leaves. They still uh, will sprout uh, uh, new berries and new flowers, but not as it was in the last season because they need to store energy 
And the next season, we harvest a small amount of coffee, but the plant have a lot of energy to store it. So we have a good blooming and the two years later, a good season. It's usually what That's happens. That's the rhythm. Yeah. But when we have climate issues, uh, a plant uh, uh, could affect these storage levels. So the plant are you is storing the energy for the next season, but due to climate issues, they need to expand that energy to regulate ah. temperature or uh, protect against drought. So there is not enough energy that we are expecting for the blooming season or the coffee development uh, season. So that is why we are expecting a good season in 2024, for instance, because we have not as a good season in 2023, but the plant need to use that energy for a lot of stuff and they affected the berries in some level, you know? Because of the drought, because of the lack of rain, because of the yeah. increased temperatures, all of these things yeah. are causing the plant to have to use, I guess it's like if you've saved up all your money, to buy a mm -hmm. house one day. Yeah. And in the meantime, you have to have emergency surgery on something. Mm -hmm. You have to spend that money on the emergency surgery. So it's going to mm -hmm. take you longer to mm -hmm. replenish the store again to be able to buy that house. But now you have to have an, a surgery every year for the next mm -hmm. three years. You never actually mm -hmm. get to the point at this point to be able to buy the house. Is that a, mm -hmm. a fair analogy? Yeah. The the only difference if even if I put the energy like fertilizer yeah. and technology, the, the plant can't plants use it. works in the yeah. Because it it's 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 something that sometimes the industry uh, think that agriculture is but different. Oh. Uh, because if I have a machine and I invest in raw material or good installation, well-trained uh, people. We usually have a good output in production All right. uh, because it's how industry works. It's yep. about do this stuff. But when I talk about agriculture, we have climate mm -hmm. that we are hard to control it in certain levels. And we have plant, which is not a machine, it's a biological machine that usually do not respond as fast as we like uh, if we do the investment. Like, uh, of course, if the, uh, the, the um, sea market is mm -hmm. in a good price, if we think about the industry, uh, we could put more money in order to make more money because the price of the thing that I'm selling is in a good level. But coffee or any kind of perennial crops mm -hmm. mostly is not like that because plant takes time if i put all the fertilizer uh, no matter if organic or not do the management train people to work well in the coffee it still plant needs time to recover or do the stuff that they need and we need to wait and if the climate will be uh, uh good uh, and um will justify all the investment mm. that I did to have the output of harvesting a good amount of coffee, you know? Yeah. So uh, beyond that part of plant saving energy, uh, uh, we need still to rely on some stuff that we not control well in the agriculture. When it comes to this kind of these systems that we're building, and uh, we're say you said in the previous episode that it, this is one of those situations where the system that you've chosen to use on your farm is going to determine how you experience this challenging environment that Brazil is in. And you mentioned that uh, regenerative farming and and agroforestry the, or organic farming these are the kinds of farms that are having a little bit more resilience mm -hmm. in these environments correct correct yeah so we know that 2024 the harvest is 
down Mm -hmm. compared to 2023. We've discussed that. What are you seeing? How can what we're experiencing now impact the 2025 and 2026 harvests? And mm-hmm. and how is that related to in the different systems? Like if we're going to talk about conventional farming versus regenerative and agroforestry, how are the the twenty twenty five and twenty twenty six harvests likely to be different for a conventional farmer versus a regenerative or uh, agroforestry um, producer? Mm-hmm. Uh, the the next season, like. 2025, um, uh, we are expecting some rains in October, about, uh, we will start, I think, uh, between 9 and 12 of October, which could be a massive so. volume of rains uh, okay. in all the coffee areas. Uh, oh, that, uh, and we are expecting good volumes too. But uh, the, the, the harm that was done by climate until now, um, in my opinion, in many agronomists' opinion, it was already affected the 2025 season Mm -hmm. because of this idea of energy storing and expanding. So part of the energy that the plants store until March, uh, because it's used to have a dry season between April to August in Brazil, but not really like dry, dry season like this season. <laughs> we have some amount days. of rain. Yeah. <laughs> we have some small amount of rains during the this month. Not so much, but enough to the plant to survive without expanding so much energy. Mm-hmm. So the energy that was stored until March in the rainy season, which mm-hmm. started in September, October 2023 until March of 2024. It's when we have temperatures and rain, so the plant could store energy. Mm -hmm. In order to save that energy for the next season, which started about September of October of 2024, Uh, but part of the energy was spending to control drought and temperature. So we know plant is kind of worn, um, tired. Th- yeah, tired, like, like very stressed. Yeah. Yeah, uh, because of that. So we will see if the blooming season will be good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even if we're okay, we still need to check if the plant will have enough of energy to uh, settle this blooming. Uh, because blooming is just a part of the season, uh, but we still need to see if the plant will have enough of uh, energy to settle this blooming and develop berries. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's, for me, uh, uh, in my opinion, it's hard to see that plants so much stressed will be enough of energy to sustain a lot of blooming and grow leaves again, because a lot of plants lost so much uh, leaves along this dry season, so they look like um, a dry plants in, like wow. uh, in the winter, like plants of, of uh, winter regions that lost all the leaves. Mm. Uh, this is not usual for coffee because coffee is a tropical plant, mm-hmm. uh, but many plants lost a lot of leaves because of the stress. Uh, it's part of the strategy of plants. Uh, to sometimes to lots, yeah, they lost leaves in order to reduce perspiration uh, um, because uh, leaves is the part of the tree that uh, capture energy, mm-hmm. but it's the part of the tree that perspirates too. Mm. So if the plant have more leaves, uh, some plants, some species, no, coffee is not uh, a well consensual in terms of uh, scientific research. But most of the plants use that strategy when they are lost in so much water, they lost some leaves, the oldest ones, Mm -hmm. in order to survive and reduce stress on the plant. Because during the rainy season now, the Mm -hmm. plant starts to sprout sprout new leaves and store energy again. 
for the plant, it is not the issue, but for economics, it is mm -hmm. because we do not sell leaves, we sell seeds. <laughs> and, oh, I've never heard someone yeah. say that. We do yeah. not sell leaves, we sell seeds. It's a yeah. t-shirt, Jonas. <laughs> That's an idea so, for free, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so for the farmer, it's good because it's not good because in terms of yield, mm -hmm. but for the plants, part of strategy of physiology to recover and have leaves in the next two seasons. Because if the plants, the plants, some plant or some area lost all the leaves, they are gonna sprout leaves again. And we have a good blooming maybe in 2025 to have a good season in 2026. So when I said the 2026 season starts now is mm -hmm. because part of the branches and the leaves that are growing will start to grow in if we have rains now will affect the 2026 season. You know, mm. so it's a long term planning. And when we think about economics and investment and things like that, that is uh, it's not just about the uh, the photography, uh, the photo that we have now because of the rain. OK, season 2025, it's fine. But uh, farmers and agronomists start to see two seasons in advance when they see the plants changing or blooming or growing and things like that. You just helped me understand when some of my friends in Brazil are saying to me, I know you're talking about a coffee crisis now, but now mm -hmm. is not the real coffee crisis for coffee farmers. Mm -hmm. In Brazil, we think that the real supply problem is going to come in 2026. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the most, like, um, if you take the numbers, mm -hmm. uh, related to growing area. I think it's it's good to see if we are, okay, uh, the, the land of growing coffee, uh, that people grow coffee are, are, are rising or not, or, or going downwards. When we see the number uh, uh, for the last 15 years, mm. we saw that the growing area in Brazil is still in the same size that was 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And why we still supplying coffee and we grow in terms of yield, it's because of technology that we are using in mm -hmm. the same area of growing uh, that we used to be 15 years ago. And uh, that means that not so much entrepreneurs interested in expanding coffee, it's most of the farmers that I met are very long term farmers that are using more technology in their area or they are changing uh, areas of growing. So farmers that grow in mountainous area mm -hmm. go to the flat areas in, in order to put more technology. More efficiency. Uh, to grow. Yeah. So they sell the coffee, the area that they have complicated areas and go to more efficient areas. But most of the people that are involved or related to coffee growing in Brazil are people that are already in this market, which in terms of economic, it's not good if we <laughs> do not bring new people or people are Well, more it's not sustainable, anymore. right? Yeah, because in some point they are stopped growing coffee. They're, they're... Uh, no matter... It's taken five or 10 or 20 years. That is yeah. what worries me. So why uh, more people or more agriculture people are interested to grow corn or soy or maize or anything, their annual cropping, mm -hmm. than perennial cropping, which are related to investment and risk, of course. Mm -hmm. Like I said, what happens now will affect my season in two years in advance and i have no idea what the price will be in two years in my advance. friend i don't know what the <laughs> price is going to be in two days i mean at yeah, this point in five minutes in te exactly <laughs> in 10 minutes from now <laughs> two minutes from now the price seems to be jumping up and down in multiples mm -hmm. of 10 
10 mm-hmm. cents. We used mm-hmm. to have such stability, low stability, but still stability mm-hmm. in the market for a long mm-hmm. period of time. Mm-hmm. A friend of mine said to me, there are traders that are making many, many, many millions of dollars. And he actually mm-hmm. said he, he would hazard a guess and say billions of dollars a day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. speculating on the futures market in coffee mm-hmm. at the moment. Mm-hmm. That's wild to me. Mm-hmm. And we put a farmer in that equation. Yeah. We have no control about that. And it, we understand why people are not interested. A hundred percent. Why would you? Mm-hmm. It just seems when Felipe was on the podcast recently, he said, listen, I, can, I need a whole team of people. I can't remember what number he said, but it was more than 20. He needs a a whole team of people to run his coffee farm, right? Mm -hmm. A soy farm can run on two people. Mm -hmm. That's that's ridiculous. Like how do you Mm -hmm. compete in that market? Mm -hmm. So – well, this sets us up again perfectly for the next conversation. We're going to be talking about ROI. We're we're doing very well, Jonas. We're talking yes, about yes, return yes. on investment, and so this this where we're finishing this off really does lead us into the kinds of decisions that people who have made their profession in agriculture have to weigh up on a daily basis, uh, especially in these kind of environments where. The, the system that you're using, I guess the business model that you're using is as important as the, the supply chain that you've got and the weather and the land, all of it, it plays a big role in all of it. So join us for the next episode, folks, where we're going to talk about return on investment with regards to coffee production. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. Please don't forget to show us some love by subscribing, liking, commenting, and most of all, sharing this podcast with your friends. Check the show notes for links, including our sponsors and our Patreon, and stay tuned for more great conversations on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward.